We thank you for loving on us to show up. <laughs> we thank you for loving on us to grip our hearts in your hands. The Bible says nothing can take us from the palm of your hand, dear God. And we thank you that as we walk and run with you, dear God, there is no weapon formed against us that will prosper. We thank you that no voice from man that stirs up on the other side of us can have any effect on our life. Jesus, may you be exalted. May you be praised and glorified the way that you deserve, Father. For no other reason but because you are worthy. The evidence is all around Jesus. Thank you. The evidence is all around Jesus. Thank you. Just begin to lift up a praise to him for what he's doing in your life right now. Glory, 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 dear God. You are so glorious, Father. Oh, dear God. I'm not going to interrupt what God is trying to do. You guys just keep pressing in. You see, as you go deeper, you're going to find more about him. You just got to keep going. You just got to keep going. You just got to keep going. Don't leave here the same way that you came in. Don't do it. Don't come face to face with the living God and walk out this place with more information. Do not walk into the presence of God. I'm going to say it again. Do not walk into the presence of God and just leave with more information. If we could just touch the hem of his garment. If a table, if a crumb from the feast could be healing for that woman's daughter, as your word says, then the feast set before us is you, Jesus. If healing is a crumb, then you must be the feast that is set before us on the table. Those of you that need to continue to press in, you keep pressing in. The rest of you can be seated. I got a word to give. I didn't even start yet. You're not going to interrupt me. You stay here if you're getting right with God. You don't worry about anything I say. You can watch it because it will be recorded. <laughs> you get right with God. Do not leave this place knowing that he's here and you didn't get touched by him. You're not going to interrupt me. You sing, you praise, you do whatever you got to do. I'm going to teach. You know, I love that song where it says the evidence is all around. There's no denying God's presence in this place. I've been to some places where I could deny it sometimes. <laughs> this is not one of them. <sighs> Praise you, Jesus. I'm just giving them time to get seated. You see, everything that I saw as, uh, as I left the conference in Michigan in 2017, I believe it was, everything that I saw, you, you, guys ever, you guys ever have God show you something and then when it came, it was far greater than what you expected? Maybe you're still in the process of waiting for that thing, but let me tell you, I'm able to stand in the middle of a promise that he gave me and it is far greater than anything I could have ever dreamed of. You see, God has been moving. See, we see everyone going after God in here. What you don't see is what's been going on behind stage. Some of our pastors praying with volunteers, praying with security guards, people being delivered and set free all over the place. It doesn't just have to stay confined to these walls right here. My hope and my prayer 
is that this just wouldn't be, as everyone has said, just a conference where you got excited and on fire for God at one point. Did you know that sometimes I need to ask God for more passion? Sometimes, I don't ha- I'm so- sometimes I'm a little tired with the job that I do. It gets a little tiring. And I don't quite have the passion inside of me to preach the gospel to strangers in Target. Sometimes I don't have that, but obviously right now I do, right? I'm just, I told you yesterday I was going to be real with you. Is that all right? I'm going to be real with you sometimes. I, quite, I don't quite have it, but guess what? When I am weak, he is strong. And when he tells you to do something, again, I'm going to tell you this. If, he t- if you have a feeling inside of you and you feel that he's trying to tell you something, you make sure it aligns with this word. And if it aligns with his word, you do it with everything in you. And you don't let anybody stop you. I have had phone calls, I have had meetings of people telling me not to do this, of people telling me not to show up and do this. <laughs> then, then this wouldn't have happened. <laughs> if anything else doesn't happen, what he's done to my heart after this took me to a new level I didn't even know was there. Jesus, bless them, Father. As I was praying at the side of the stage before I walked up, I just weeped, had people praying with me. Thank you for that. Um, I needed it. Uh, I just weeped and I cried because I felt the Father's heart for his people. You see, I felt the vision of a conference and I saw it in in my face, but I never cried about it as I saw it. I was excited. But I felt his heart for you. God, God loves you so much. He loves you so much that he's been nurturing a path with people in your life, whatever the reason is, to bring you here today and last night so that you could hear the truth and touch the living God. Because if we're going to say at our pulpits that we believe that God is alive, that he is well today and all of these things, then we better walk it out and believe it and not just say it with our mouth. I believe in a God of yesterday, today, and forever. That's what his word said. I guess we're in forever, maybe, (laughs) when they wrote it. However you want to look at it, I look at it as we're here today. See, the spirit of religion tells you what God has done and what God is going to do. Let me say that again. The spirit of religion will tell you what God has done and what God is going to do, but it doesn't tell you what God is doing right now. I could tell you story after story, but like I said, the evidence is here. I I told you I was going to get out the way and just let God show up. Again, raise your hand if you were physically healed, please, one more time. Look at the hands. Look at the hands. (laughs) Some Oakland Raider quarterback can't do that, all right? Can't just put a whole bunch of people in a room, hopefully get you really excited and then say, your body's healed. Like, it just doesn't work that way. But when Jesus shows up, things begin to shift. When Jesus shows up, things begin to change. When Jesus shows up, nothing else matters. I have a beautiful wife, her name is Heather. She's born and raised from Fresno. And the reason that I don't lust at other women, the reason that I don't cheat on my wife is because I run after Jesus. I love her because that's God's daughter. (laughs) Some of you women aren't being treated like God's daughter. And I want you to hear this, that I don't want you to settle for anything less than God's best for you. Don't you dare settle for any perverse little boy that you may think He'll get you a fancy house and something someday. Oh, man, but he's in this cool garage band right now. (laughs) They're going to make it big, I'm telling you. Don't settle for anything less than God's best for your life. I want to tell you something about my wife. She's the reason that I'm standing on this stage right now. She is the reason. You see, there's a lot of people I want to give credit to, obviously. My family's here. They're all here. And they all help mold and shape me and teach me the truth. The Bible says that if you train your child in the ways of the Lord, as they grow old, they will not depart from it. 
But my mom and my dad and a lot of people probably spent a lot of time praying for this one. Because there was a time there where I was far from it. There was a time where I was running around these streets doing things I should have never been doing. Smoking weed, going from that party to that party, doing all these things and then praying to God, Lord, forgive me on Saturday night because i got to go to church tomorrow so I can feel like I'm saved. That was me. I did that here. But that woman right there, she wrote me a letter. She was just a friend at the time. And I had been doing some things that I probably shouldn't have been able to do. The, 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 it's so crazy to me that as I look back, maybe you feel this way as you've been wrecked by Jesus this week or in your life. When you look back, you don't even recognize that person anymore. Like, how could, that wasn't me. Like, that's, that's, like, a different, that's like a different life, right? Well, I've been born again, all right? And so she wrote me this letter, and it says this. It was like 37 pages long. You know, women, when they get on something, they just... Right about, right about my hairline for 30 pages. I don't want my kids to have that. Sorry, Dallas. He got out of the pool one day, and I, that's, that's my fault, son. I'm sorry. <laughs> Losing it a little bit. <laughs> you see, she wrote me this letter, and out of all, all of the things that she wrote, it said this. It said, you're not the person I thought you were. She loved me with everything in her. She wanted to, to, to marry me. She wanted to be with me. And I was still interested in just doing other things, right? I will say this, when I laid my eyes on her for the first time, I said, oh, I'm going to marry that woman, but it just, just not yet, right? Just uh, not yet. Some of y'all need to hurry up and get right because it's time, but some of y'all women say amen to that. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> but she wrote that letter, and when she wrote that letter, I read it. I don't remember anything else but those words. You're not the person I thought you were. And I remember crumbling that thing up, and I threw it on the ground angrily. Oh, man, whatever. And within 10 minutes, I was laying on my face telling Jesus, whatever you ask me to do, I will do it with everything in me. I will never, ever one more second run away from your love. You see, she loved God more than she loved me. And our marriage is based on that, that she runs after Jesus with everything in her so that she can love me the right way. I, I run after Jesus with everything in me so that I can love her the right way. I don't know, some of y'all need to hear that. I'm going to be in Matthew chapter 3. I'm going to get to verse, maybe chapter 4. Who knows? God's been moving. I may not even say anything in this. <laughs> in those days, John the Baptist began preaching in the Judean wilderness. His message was, turn from your sins and turn to God because the kingdom of heaven is near. You see, he was calling people to repent of their sins. Isaiah had spoken of John when he said this, he has a voice shouting in the wilderness, preparing a pathway for the Lord's coming. Make a straight road for him. And, and uh, it's either John or Luke. It also says that he would level the mountains and hills, that he would turn the windy road into a straight road to point directly to Jesus. You see, when I ask God, why do you keep using me? He said, because you let me show up. And then it's my job to steward myself to make sure I give you a straight path to him. And that's exactly what I'm going to do today. You see, I'm going to tell you some cool stuff and I'm going to tell you some stories, but by the end of this, you're just going to leave with Jesus as you already have, right? That's it. I believe, though, this, that there's still some people out there, maybe skeptics, maybe even believers, and you're like, man, I just haven't pressed in far enough today. you still got time. You still have time. There's no time like the present. I thought I knew God, like I would get teary-eyed sometimes, but I have been wrecked this weekend. Every time I hear just a, a worship song start playing, I just begin to weep because He is just so worthy. You see, I would always hear pastors stand on stage and say, God is so worthy. Jesus is so worthy to just be praised. And I'd be like, well, yeah, woo, I agree. But it wasn't until I just kept going deeper and deeper and deeper. As, as soon as I felt like, no, my back's getting tired, I want to sit down. No, 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 I'm going to go deeper. No, 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 I'm going to go deeper. Okay, that thought's over. I, I'm done crying. No, 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 I'm not done. I'm going deeper. I want more of you, Jesus, because when you show up, everything else is made right. And I believe that's my job. That's what I've been sent to do, to just make a straight pathway for you to see the king. And that's what I intend on doing. So in uh, verse 4, it says this, John's clothes. Now, okay, I'm going to say this. 
I don't know about you guys, Francis, Corey, Maddie, Damon, there's other ministers here. I don't know about you, but starting your uh, ministry off by just going in the wilderness with can't, your, his, the Bible says that his, his, uh, his clothes were made from camel hair and that his, uh, he, he wore a leather belt. That's good, right? He got the leather belt right. That's a good product. But that his food was locusts and honey. So I could just imagine locusts just all grimy, honey all over this dude. And he's just shouting in the wilderness, repent of your sins. Repent. The kingdom of heaven is near. It is near. I could only imagine that if that was happening on Shaw Avenue, we'd probably go call the cops like, dude, this dude is tripping. <laughs> this guy, he needs a little bit of help. We're going to get it for him. I'm not going to get out of my car, though, but I'll call the cops to help him. <laughs> you see, this, this is how John's ministry started. It wasn't he went to the right uh, Bible school where they chiseled out all the stuff, right? You know, like all, it wasn't like that he just went in and just sat with the Ten Commandments and just like just studied them all day. Like it, that's not how his ministry started. But I don't know about those guys. I don't think their ministry you know, started in the forest or in the wilderness just shouting and eating locusts and honey. I, I, Lord help me. I hope mine doesn't have to start that way. <laughs> but this is how, th I'm just painting the picture for you. So then the Bible says this, people from Jerusalem and from every section of Judea and from all over the Jordan Valley went out to the wilderness to hear him preach. And I, wh what I want to do is stop here is that I believe that as he began to shout, obviously he went out there because he felt God was telling him like, no, you're going to start out there, right? Like this is what I want you to do. You're going to go start out there and you're going to prepare this pathway for Jesus to show up, right? And as he began to do that, I began, he just, repent of your sins, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Repent of your sins, the kingdom of heaven. Jesus, the King, the Messiah, he's coming. And I, and I see it kind of like this. I've heard it taught this way too, where there's probably a group of people walking by saying, wow, this dude's crazy, right? Like this dude is nuts. This dude just went after healing in 260 million televisions <laughs> all around the world. He's a little bit crazy. You better believe it. But you see, as, a, as about four or five of them were together and probably laughing like, ha, huh, look at this bum on Shaw Avenue. Um, I, be, I believe that one person probably said, I, I need to go see what that's about. Man, 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 I, I, like I hear what y'all are saying. This, yeah, this dude's tripping, but I'm going to go over here real quick. Like, I'm still with you guys, but I want to go see what's up. And I believe that as he began to do that, it just began to grow. You see, when Jesus is doing something... When he begins to do a work, when God is behind something, nothing can stop it. Even a crazy man in camel hair that eats locusts and honey that wants to start a, a ministry could start it that way, and people from all over began to flood where he was. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. He would baptize them, and they would just confess their sins. I'm an adulterer. I have cheated on my spouse. I have stolen from them. I took too much of the taxes that I should have taken. I'm selfish. Right, we like to look at the big sins, right? The big sins. Just because your lust isn't their adultery doesn't mean you're not in sin. I didn't write that. <laughs> Just because your lust isn't their adultery doesn't mean you're in sin doesn't mean you're just, you're good, you'll be all right. We are all in desperate need of Jesus. And you see, as they became to come out of the water, they would shout out their, their problems, the things that they're dealing with, the things that has been going on in their heart. See, maybe some of y'all need a heart change. Some of y'all still are holding some grudges. You found Jesus, but you still want to hold on to that hate that you have because they were wrong. Did you know that while you were still sinners, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us? So don't the people that have wronged us still deserve love too, even if they don't deserve it? You're telling me that God wants me to love people even if they don't deserve it? Yeah, absolutely. Did you deserve his love? At your worst moment, did you really deserve someone dying for you, if I'm going to be honest? I don't think so. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> Verse 7 says this, but when... He saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming to be baptized. He denounced them. Oh, I love this. You brood of snakes. Snake, see, I don't like snakes. We lived in Houston, Texas. Thanks, Dave. 
We lived in Houston, Texas, and we would get water moccasins in our house. And now I deathly am afraid of snakes. <laughs> you see, even the devil was a snake. See, I'm just trying to make a point that snakes are bad. If you have a snake at your house, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You brood of snakes, he exclaimed. Who warned you to flee God's coming judgment? Here's my favorite part of this. Oh, and it gets better after this, but I can't wait. Prove by the way that you live that you have really turned from your sins and turned to God. Don't just say we are safe, we are descendants of Abraham. That proves nothing. God can change these stones here into children of Abraham. Even now the axe of God's judgment is poised and ready to sever your roots. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into fire. Just like Francis said, Derek, you're telling me he's going, he'll chop me down? Throw, no, no, the Bible is. <laughs> I tried to be like Francis. No, he's so, he's so soft and peaceful. I just love his heart, right? Tender. Gosh, I love that man. I'm a little rough around there. I'm a raider, right? <laughs> Just kidding. You see this, what I love about this is that he's telling them, don't just show up to the conference, right? Don't just show up to where God is doing something with dress nice and putting on a front. Like, we've been talking about it all week, man. He wants the deepest, darkest part of you to just be brought to light. There are some things, there are some amazing people in here that are on the fast track to heaven, let me tell you, but you got some stuff deep down that you ain't fixed yet. You got some stuff deep in your inners. <laughs> is that scientific? Deep in here that God is trying to get ripped out of you because he wants to prune you and clip you and make you exactly who you want to, you to be. Do you know that when God cuts away at you, it's not comfortable sometimes? When God is trying to remove some stuff from your life, it sucks. Can I say that, standing here, preaching? It's real. Like, it is not easy, man. It is not easy for voices to come against you when all you've tried to do is love them back. It is not easy to continually stand for Jesus and continually run after Jesus and voices come against you saying, no, no, we don't want anything to do with that. You see, I live in an area sometimes where I get told, yeah, that's not for me. But I'm going to keep proving with my life that I live for him. And I'm not just going to say it because I'm standing on a stage. You see, uh, I heard this said too one time, got a good mentor, that if you really want to find out about someone, have their wife introduce them. You really want to find out about them, she'll be like, all right, whatever, well, like, here he is. Like... You're probably going to change the way you think about the guy, right? But if she says he is, he is passionate, he is loving, he is faithful, you see, those are proven with actions, not just words. See, I'm trying to prove that, that I am a follower of Jesus with my actions. You mean you're crazy enough to stand on stage and risk your reputation and go after healing? Absolutely. I'm going to risk it with my life because I just saw theirs change. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of what the gospel can do. Verse 11, John says, I baptize with water those who turn from their sins and turn to God. But someone is coming soon who is far greater than I am, so much greater that I am not even worthy to be his slave. He will be, bab you will be, he will be baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He is ready to separate chafe from the grain with his winnowing fork. Then he will clean up the threshing area, storing the grain in his barn, but burning the chafe with never-ending fire. This is real stuff. It gets real sometimes when you read the Bible, and I'm like, mm, dang. I sh like, I probably shouldn't have said that to my wife. <laughs> like, you take the trash out. No. <laughs> well, I just went to work. Why do I? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, that spoke to some of y'all. <laughs> you work. You don't get hit by Von Miller. <laughs> you see... As I believe that this was happening, I'm going to close that. You can read it. I, God is just telling me just to tell the story. So 
as I believe that he was just standing there looking like a crazy guy and people began to show up and these guys came up and he, he denounced them and all of these things. You see, what John had the opportunity to do is the Bible says this, that all before John, everyone kept saying, someone is coming, someone is coming, someone is coming. The kingdom of heaven is near. It's right here. It's coming. People are being baptized. There are thousands of people all around. Imagine there was just a little puddle in the middle of this place, and this place was filled up, and people are just being dunked and just radically changed, right? Just imagine they're, they don't even care what anybody thinks. They are shouting out their sin. They are repenting before the Lord. Imagine how beautiful that would be. Some of you ministers, some of you pastors could probably put yourself in that position, put yourself in that place like, wow, God is using me like this? You see, God has placed me in a place where not one but two of our family's names are on the football field stadium like, like we did something in football here. Like that was cool, right? Like that's amazing. He's allowed both of us and my brother Darren, state championship winning coach, like this is crazy. My dad dunked it 50. Like he's blessed us, right? I just wanted to say that to brag on you, dad. He was 50 and he dunked it. You see, God has done some crazy things for us. He's done some amazing things and put me on a stage in front of thousands of people. And I, should, you know, there's a little bit of me back in the day that would have stood here and be like, man, look, man, hey, look what I did, you know? Like, dang, man, this is cool because I threw some touchdowns. People want to show up, right? There would have been a little bit of that in me if I'm just being honest. Now, I wouldn't have said it. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have spoken it, but there would have been a little bit of that in me. So I could imagine being in that moment just, man, people are being right in the middle of the, probably the most amazing part of his ministry, he's standing here and he says something that is unbelievable to me. It blows my mind that while all of that stuff is going on, in the midst of everything, where people are being saved and repenting, in the midst of what we've seen today, right? In the midst of everything we've seen over this weekend. He gets, he gets to do this. He gets to do something that no one in the history of the world got to do. And, it, and it's this. Everyone said, someone is coming, someone is coming. John got to stand there, and amidst all of that, he still knew where to keep his eyes. And he says, amongst all of those people and all these great things going on, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. See, I don't think you grabbed that a little bit. Amongst everything in his profession that could be amazing, people are being set free, lives are being transformed. He gets to stand on stage in front of everybody. And while it's all going on and all of the attention is on him, he gets to say, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus shows up for the first time in that moment and John gets to go, there he is. Stop looking at me. I'm not even worthy to do this for him. I'm not even worthy to baptize him. You should be baptizing me. Like there he is. And he gets to point at him. The platform that I've been given from God, I get to do this. I get to say, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. <laughs> Amongst all the success, the fame, all of those kind of things, every, every day with my life I get to say, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world with my actions. There he is, man. He, man, Derek, I can't believe you were so nice you did it. Man, it wasn't me. Because if you knew me, that wouldn't have happened. If you knew me, none of that would have happened. I wouldn't have given that. What? That just doesn't make sense. My business manager is here. He would inform me, that you probably shouldn't give that. Yeah, but God told me to. <laughs> Thank the Lord that he's with me on that. <laughs> you see, I get to point straight to Jesus with my life. I get to stand on a stage and say, look, man, here he is. If the worship team, if y'all wouldn't mind, wherever y'all are at, I'll give you some time. Y'all can run back. Take your time. Find them. <laughs> if there isn't anybody, we got somebody out there. Some of y'all can play some piano that we asked to come join us. Corey, you can play the piano? We'll get somebody. Someone will join me. If not, I'm going to beg Nikki. Nikki, please. Nikki, we need you. <laughs> but in a moment, they'll be here. But what I want to say to you is this, is that what does your life point at? Some of you are in some downtime. Some of you are in some really great times. Is your life going to continue to point, yeah, look, man, look what God is doing through me, right? 
Or are you just going to get out the way and let Jesus show up? You see, you, what we did, we tried to do is we tried to bring, we tried to bring some people <laughs> that all they do with their life is run after Jesus. Because as we run after Jesus as leaders of a conference, in our professions, in our households, you see, as we run after Jesus, all things are made well. There is peace in your home. There is love in your hearts. There is the repentance of sin. Supernatural things begin to happen when Jesus is involved. Jesus is alive and well, seated at the right hand of the Father. He's alive today. No other religion can say that. We get to point right to him. I get to get out of the way and say, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And we're going to do that. I'm going to point straight to Jesus with my life. That's the platform I've been given. Wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. I don't, I don't need, I, I got enough money to go to Target, get what we need. People know my name in other countries. All that stuff is cool. I get to throw touchdowns and people cheer. And when I throw a ball away, people boo me. <laughs> Why do you throw it to the running back? Because you don't know what the read was. <laughs> I'm going to use my life to point directly to Jesus. Now, this is the point that I wanted to hit. You see, I wanted to set the stage a little bit, okay? I wanted to set the stage just for a second of what, I, what, I, what my goal was. My goal was to stand up here and talk to you about John the Baptist a man that was doing some awesome things and point you straight to Jesus, right? That was my goal. Now I want to tell you this. As Jesus was baptized, he came out of the water and a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Some of you have given your lives to Jesus this weekend. And I want you to know that God is already pleased with you. There's nothing, Jesus' Jesus's ministry hadn't even started yet. You understand what I'm saying? His ministry hadn't even started yet, and God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. As soon as your heart turned over the keys to God, as soon as you said, no, I'm walking with him, he is already pleased with you. You don't have to earn it. I, I'm sorry that if your religion taught you that you have something to earn, Jesus already paid for everything you think you have to earn. And I'm sorry if that's the first time or you're offended by that, but that's just the truth. It's not, oh man, but I got to do this and this and this and I'll get like a three-story house in heaven or something. It doesn't work that way. You see, <laughs> story of the prodigal son. There was a white, he was living, there was, a, there was a dad, a father, and two boys. And one of them, the prodigal son, you know the story, he runs away, he gets his inheritance, spends it on wild living, right? And he wastes it all away. He wastes the whole thing away. And this is the beautiful part of the story that I'm not going to teach you the whole thing. I'd be here for another two hours talking about that story. I love it. Here's the beautiful part that when the son finally decided, no, I, I need to go home. See, he's making up in his head, man, I'm going to have to, Dad, I've sinned against you. I've sinned against uh, the family and all these kind of things, like forgive me, please, like all that he comes back. He's going to come back and say these things. The Bible says that as the son came over the hill, the dad saw him from far off and ran out and met him. As soon as you turn around and turn that thing in your heart back to Jesus, he's already there waiting for you like this. He's already sitting there waiting for you just like this saying, come on, come on. Out of all the things that he's got going on, you say, man, Jesus is doing all these crazy things. Why does he care about me? Out of all the things that father was doing, he was still looking for his son to come up over that hill. He's been looking for you to run after him. There is more that he's calling you to in your hearts. There is more that he's calling you to in your lives. He's just sitting there waiting for you. Just come on. Come on. Come over that hill and run to me. Come over that hill and run to me, and I'll get that thing in your heart straightened out. Come over that hill, and I'll get that job situation straightened out. Come on over that hill and run with me. Come on over that hill, and let me heal your body. Come on over that hill, and let me touch your son. Let me bless him. Some of y'all are waiting for some kids to come back to your homes. Some of them have ran away. And I know that you're sitting there 
looking over that hill waiting for that time to come. And I want to tell you that Jesus wants that time to be now, but hey, you got to come do it for him maybe. <laughs> I believe in intercessory prayer. I believe that we can intercede on someone else's behalf and Jesus can show up in their life. I believe that we can intercede on a loved one's behalf. I say that to you because that's what I'm living in right now. Interceding on the people I love so much on their behalf. Saying, Jesus, please show up for them. They need you way more than I need you. I'm fine. I'll be all right. But Jesus, show up for them. Please show up for them. I love them that much. And I believe that God is doing the same thing to you. He's sitting there saying, come on, I love you so much. Just come on. Come on over that hill. Derek's pointed you to me. Come on, run to me. I end saying this, teaching in this. The next chapter, I just told you that the Bible says that when Jesus came out of the water, the Bible says if you, or the Bible says this, that uh, God, a voice descended from heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. You see, in the very next chapter, Jesus goes out to the desert and he's tempted by the devil, right? I want to bring something to your attention. The devil has been trying to attack my family for a week and a half now. He's been trying to attack my family. Oh, I'm going to do this. Yeah, I'm going to do it. He's been trying to attack my family for years now, and guess what? He can't have them. Not one more second. (laughs) The devil says to Jesus, if you are the Son of God, he says it to him three different times. I'm not going to read the whole thing. He said, if you are the Son of God, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself off this thing. Surely God will catch you. Surely his angels will protect you. If you are the Son of God, what voice are you listening to, the world's or, or, or God's? Because God, just the chapter before, said, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm already well pleased. What voices are you listening to saying, oh, no, that can't happen? No, 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 that just hasn't happened in anyone else's life, so it can't happen in yours. But what is God saying? That's what I want to ask you tonight. That is the main point that I wanted to get to. I wanted to point you to Jesus. I wanted to get you stirred up to say this. Which voice are you listening to? Because if you listen to the world's voice, if you listen to their thoughts and their ideas, sometimes you're a loser, sometimes you're not good enough, sometimes you're not enough. You don't measure up. Sometimes you don't meet the standard that they have set for you. The only standard that you have to meet is the one that God has set for you. And that is this, that you are already beloved. You just have to come to the realization in your heart that he already loves you. The God in heaven loves you so much that he just wants to lay his hand on your life and just say, come on, I wanna walk with you. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Do you know what a yoke is? It's got a spot for two, Google it. He wants you to put your head in there with him, and guess what? He's going to do all the work, man. He just wants to walk with you. He just wants to carry you through everything that you're going through. But I believe this with everything in me, that the season of just, uh, I'm going to say it this way, that the, the preaching and the teaching of just teaching you how to get by things, giving you 12 steps to kind of weave you through depression. I believe with everything in me that one moment in God's presence can get that depression out of you in an instant. Which voice are you listening to, though? You don't have to take my word for it. God's been speaking this whole weekend. You just got to open your eyes and open your heart. I want you guys to close your eyes for a second. Don't fall asleep. I'm almost done. Everything was led to this so that I could point you into Jesus' hands. Everything has led to this moment right here. There was still some of you, you know, we've had altar calls and people have just been getting right with God all week and it's been crazy. Some of you still don't know Jesus. I'm going to tell you real quick, even atheists know that Jesus was a real person. I'm going to tell you the difference though, that Christians believe. Christians believe that he is the son of God, that he came to this earth, lived a perfect life, blameless, sinless, took a beating so bad that you couldn't even recognize his face. And He took that beating while we were still sinners. He hung up on a cross and was mocked and ridiculed and laughed at. Any of y'all been mocked, ridiculed, or laughed at in your life? 
I know I have. And as he did that and he hung on the cross, he died. But three days later, Jesus rose again and is seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven. And he defeated the grave. And you say, why you tell me that? Because he did that for you? Some of you have been living with Jesus. Some of you have not. You say, man, Derek, I need, the, I need, I don't understand it all. I don't have all the answers. But I need this God that you are talking about right now. You see, this same God grabbed my heart when I knew everything there was to know about God. I knew all about him. I was raised in the church. But I didn't know Jesus the way I knew him until he met me in my room on that Fresno, on that Fresno State campus just south of Shaw Avenue. I didn't know that guy. When he showed up, everything changed. If y'all want that Jesus, will you just raise your hand? Those of you that raise your hand, I'm, not, I'm, just, I'm just gonna get right to it. I want you to come forward. Come on, come on. Come on. I think we can do better than that, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's go, let's go, yes. There's more of you, you better get out your seat and stop caring what they think about you. You better get up. If you will not be bold in here in God's house, then you will not be bold when you leave these doors. I want you to know all of you that are coming, there's still more coming and we will wait that all of heaven is celebrating your decision right now. All of heaven is celebrating you right now. Here's the beautiful thing. When you get a whole th thousands of people together, you that are accepting Christ for the first time or trying to get back right, you literally saw random strangers healed. <laughs> you literally saw people being delivered all weekend. You literally saw with your own two eyes and felt in your heart what he's doing to you right now. Don't you let anything ever convince you otherwise that that can't happen. Don't you ever let anyone tell you in this worth that Jesus can't do what he's done this weekend because you've already seen it. Why do you think we all got together and just put ourselves on the line all the time speaking for Jesus? It's because we've touched the same Jesus that you're touching right now. We've gotten a grasp of that Jesus. Now look at you. I want to pray over you, Jesus, right now. I pray that you would forgive them of their sins, Father God, that they would confess this in their heart and make this their prayer, dear God, that you would make them white as snow, dear God, you'd put their sins as far as the east is from the west, that they'd commit with their mouth that Jesus, you are Lord and God did raise you from dead. Holy Spirit, that you would fall on them right now. You would lead them and guide them into all truth just like your word says, Father God. And that these people right here, these precious people whom you love, would always run to your feet. Jesus, we thank you for their salvation. We thank you. We lift up a shout right now of praise and of glory and of honor, dear God. God bless you guys. I'm gonna give you guys a second. If you need to stay here and pray, you stay here and pray and you get right with God. If you, you came up here to take a picture of me, I will kindly ask you to leave. Not even kidding with you. Please leave if that's what you came up here to do. But the rest of you, if you don't need to stay up here anymore, you can go back and sit down because now I'm gonna get the believers. <laughs> now I'm gonna make it real awkward. If you wanna stay, you can stay. If not, we need to make some room. If not, We'll just make it happen right here. How many of y'all got some stuff going on in life? I do. This guy has a lot of stuff going on. How many of y'all need a touch from Jesus in your life? See, I believe this, that God can set free, that he can deliver you from your addictions, that he can heal your body. That's what I believe. That's the God that I believe in. And guess what? That God that I believed in has only proven me right because I ran after him with everything in me. 
you believers right here, you new believers, don't ever graduate from the feet of Jesus. Do not ever leave his doorstep. You, you have questions, you, have, you need some answers, get in a good Bible-based church, okay? You, you read the Word of God. If you don't understand something, when, let me say this. Wherever you see God moving, get with those people and say, man, yeah, I need to know some more stuff. If you don't have it all figured out, that's all right. But there are some great churches here in this area that would love to disciple you and teach you and raise you guys up. It's not just a decision or a moment that you made just because it was cool. This is a lifestyle. The Bible says, if you are lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. If you came up here saying, well, that sounds cool, but I still run with these people, you can go kick rocks then, man. I ain't got time for you. All I need is one or two of you to be on fire and we can do some damage. <laughs> I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Those of you that raise your hands that need a touch from Jesus, raise your hands right now. Woo, I want you to stand up if you need it. I want you to stand up if you need it. This right here is what I live for. You want to know what Derek Carr's about? You can listen to anybody else. You can read about it. I'm sure everyone's got something to say. But let me tell you what I'm about. This right here. People coming to know, man, I need something that I haven't found in that bottle. Man, I need something that I have not found in that joint. Man, I need something that I have not found in that man or that woman. Man, I need something that I have not found on that computer screen. Man, I need something real. Man, I need someone to save my life. Man, when you were talking, there's someone in here right now that even as I, as I begin to preach and as I begin to say things, I'm going to say this to you, that you know you're not worthy enough. But guess what? He is. And he loves you more than you could ever imagine. Don't worry about the things that you've done. Just repent of your sins and you'll be made new in his eyes. You that need a touch from Jesus, I want to pray for you right now. Jesus, I pray you know the needs of everyone in this place. And I just want to honor your time, dear God, nothing else. I want to honor you. And I want you to drop your presence on these people right now. I want you to drop the, your presence on these people right now. I see you shaking right now. That is the power of God coming real in your life. That is the power of God like you've never felt it before and you never let go of that thing. You never let go of that thing. Y'all never let go of that thing. I just want you guys that need a touch from Jesus, it's nothing special that I'm going to say. I want you to go get it from him. I'm not going to spoon feed you. We want that too much in the world today. I'm not going to spoon feed you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to point you in the right direction just like John did. There he is. There he is. Go get him. Go get him. Go get him. Press in. Press in. Press in. For the next little bit, I just want you guys that need a touch from God, I just want you to begin to give a shout of praise and don't stop. You keep going until you get an answer. You don't stop till you get an answer. <laughs>